So you want to get into Roblox development, but you don't know how to start. Well, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you the complete basics of Roblox Studio. This video is intended to be the easiest and quickest beginner's guide to using Roblox Studio. The first thing you have to do, if you haven't already, is download Roblox Studio. It's really easy. Just go to create.roblox.com. You can open up the creator hub and all you have to do is click start creating and it should prompt you to download Roblox Studio. So you can just click this button right here, download studio. So once you've downloaded Roblox Studio, you want to go ahead and open it up. So once you've opened up Roblox Studio, you can see a whole bunch of templates that Roblox has already provided for us. Now on the left side of the screen over here, you can see this panel and you can look at the different options down here. So under my games, you can see three different sections. So you'll have a section for the games that you've worked on in the past, any group games that you're a part of, or any games that your friends have shared with you. But what we want to do is we're going to go back to the section called new, and we want to open up the base plate template. So once you've opened up the base plate template, you might be thinking that this looks super complex and hard to understand, but that's why I'm here. I'm going to break it down for you. So this large window over here that you see in the center of the screen is your game environment. This is where all the magic takes place. This is the environment that your players will be inside of when they play your game. So first thing we want to do is we want to maneuver inside of this game environment. So how do you do that? If you're familiar with Roblox at all, you'll know that the WASD keys are used to move your character. And that's the same thing you do in Roblox Studio as well. So you can use the WASD keys to move around inside the game environment. You can also use your mouse to rotate yourself inside of. So you can hold down right click and it'll allow you to rotate yourself inside of the game environment. You can also use your scroll wheel to scroll in or scroll out of your game environment. And if you want to select anything inside your game environment, you can just left click. Now before we do anything, the first thing you need to do is to save your game to Roblox. So you can go under File over here in the top left corner and click Save to Roblox. Now here you can name the game that you're working on. It doesn't matter what you call it as long as you remember it. So I'm just going to call it Game 1. And then we can click Save. Now, if you want to work on this game with your friends, you can just go in the top right corner over here and click this plus sign. And from here, you can add your friends so that they can work on the game with you. Now, with that out of the way, we can get to the exciting part. So a good place to start would be to insert a part inside your game environment. So you can go under the home tab if you're not already there and click part. Now that'll insert a part inside your game environment. Now Roblox gives you a few tools for you to interact with your parts. So under the home tab, you can see four tools over here, select, move, scale, and rotate. By default, we should have the select tool equipped and that allows you to freely drag the part and move it as you wish. Now the move tool over here allows you to move the part along a certain axis. So this blue arrow over here allows me to move it side to side, the red arrow front and back, and then the green arrow up and down. Now the scale tool over here allows me to change the size of the part so I can just make it bigger or smaller as I wish. Lastly, the rotate tool allows me to rotate the part in any direction that I want. Now let's say you made a mistake, like I moved it all the way over there by accident. You can use the keyboard shortcut to undo which is Control Z to undo the previous action. Now under the home tab, it also allows you to change some other stuff about this part. So let's say I want to change the material that the part was made out of. I can click the material manager, open it up. And let's say I want it to be made out of brick. So I can click this brick texture over here and click this arrow part over here where it says apply to selected parts. So after I click that, the selected part that we have in the middle over here will be turned into brick. I can also change the color of the part by clicking this color palette over here and going under the drop down menu and selecting a color from this color palette. So let's say I want to make it blue and the part turns blue as expected. 
Now, perhaps the most important part about this tutorial are the Explorer and Properties tab. So if you don't already have it open, you can go under the Views section at the top over here and open the two windows by clicking these two buttons, the Explorer and Properties button. So the Explorer window basically shows you everything that's inside your game. Now this game environment that all of these parts are in right now is called Workspace. You can also insert any parts you want inside the workspace by clicking this plus button over here. And I can insert a new part by clicking this button. Now Workspace is what we call a service and inside your game there are many different types of services. For example, you've got the player service which keeps track and stores all your players that are in your game at the moment. The lighting service which handles all the lighting inside your game. Service script service where all your scripts are inside of. Starter pack where all your tools that you want to give your players will be found inside of. And star GUI where all your GUIs will be stored. So we've covered the explorer tab, but what does the properties window do? Now when we select something, we'll see that a new section has appeared in the properties window. Now properties are basically states that your object has. So when I select a part, it'll show a list of the parts properties. Some examples of the properties of this part will be the color, the material, the transparency, the size, the position, and more. Now under the properties window, it displays all of the properties and the current values of these properties. But it also allows you to change the properties that the object has. For example, I can change the transparency of the part by dragging the slider over here and making it more transparent. I can change the color from here if I want as well. Maybe I can make it red, for example. So yeah, these two windows are extremely important. The explorers window and the properties window. So let's move on. So under the home tab, you'll see a button called toolbox. Now the toolbox is basically a collection of all the different models and parts that other players have made and have put online. This is super useful because let's say I needed a tree house and I didn't know how to make one. I can basically look it up inside of the toolbox so I can search tree house and there'll be a bunch of tree houses that other people have made that I can put inside my game. So if I want to insert a treehouse from the toolbox into my game, I can just click on the model that I want. Now sometimes it'll give you this prompt. It basically tells you that there are scripts inside. So you need to be careful that there they aren't any kind of virus scripts. Since this is an approved model, you can see it by this little shield icon over here. We can just insert it without any worries. So I'm just going to click OK over here. And now this treehouse has been inserted inside my game. I'm just going to size it down because it's really big right now. And I'm just going to drag it back down to the ground. Something else I want to mention is if you want to focus on a certain part, you can just select it and then click F and that'll focus in your camera on the part. Now another really important tool that you have inside of the home tab is the terrain editor. So you can just click editor over here. And what we want to do is we want to go to the edit section. Now the terrain editor basically allows you to add or remove different kinds of terrain. So if you want to add a bunch of grass or a bunch of snow, you would use the terrain editor. So how it works is you would go to the draw section if you want to add terrain and you would select the type of material that you want. So let's say I wanted grass. So I select grass and then I select the brush mode. So let's say I want to add grass. So I'm going to click the add button over here and I'm going to start dragging my mouse across the screen. And as you can see, grass is being added to my game environment over here. And let's say I want to switch it to ice. I can just switch the source material and I can keep drawing. I can even add water if I wanted to. So I can add a block of water over here and I can switch the kind of tools. So maybe I want to smoothen my terrain a bit. So I can click the smoothen tool and then just drag it over and just smooth everything down. 
Now, what if you want to play test your game? Now, that's really simple. So you can just close this terrain editor and under the home tab, you can click the play button. So what this does is it'll basically put your character inside the game. So you can play test your game as if you're a real player. And you can interact with the game environment the same way a normal player would. I can also switch between what the player sees and what the server sees. So beside this play button, you got this little monitor icon over here. And you can basically click it to switch between what the server sees and what you see. So right now I'm viewing it from the server. So this is basically like creative mode in Minecraft. And if you wanted to, you can switch back to the client. So when you switch back to the client, you are basically seeing what a normal player would when they play your game. And if at any point you want to stop the playtest, you can just click the stop button over here. Now, if you'll see at the top over here, you have many different tabs. So we've just covered the home tab. So let me switch over to the model tab. So the model tab basically has a lot of the same tools, but it's more specific to actually building stuff inside of your game. For example, you can change the amount that you move or size apart by, or the amount that you rotate apart. For example, I can change the move tool to move every one stud. For future reference, one stud is basically one of these blocks over here. So the distance between one end of the block and another end of the block is one stud. So when you have a larger interval, it's less accurate. So basically, if I set it to one stud, every time you move the part, it moves by one stud. But if I set the interval to 0.5 studs, it'll be more accurate and it'll move halfway down instead. So if you want it to be more precise, you would set a smaller interval. Now you also have a bunch of these uh, modeling tools over here. So. These modeling tools work with two parts. So let me just insert a second part over here and size it so that it's a similar size to this first part I have here. So let's say I want to join two of these parts together. Now this is where the union tool comes into play. And I'm gonna go back under the model tab and I'm gonna select both of them. Now when I click this union tool, it basically turns both of these parts into one part, one solid part. So I'm just going to do control Z to undo that. And now I want to talk about the intersect tool. So when I select the two parts together and I clicked intersect, it basically gives me a part that has overlapped with the other two parts. So if I undo that, you can see that I have a small section over here where the two parts are touching each other. And when you click intersect, that's what is left. So let me just select one of the parts and I'm going to click negate. Now when you negate something, it turns into a negative part. So when you try to select both parts and you union it together, it actually takes a section away from the regular part. So now you got this hole inside of this part over here. Now the last tool I want to talk about is the separate tool. So the separate tool works by splitting up two parts that have been unioned together. So if I union the red part and the blue part together and turn into one, I select it and I click the separate tool, it will go back into being two separate parts. So the next tab I want to talk about was the avatar tab. Now the avatar tab has much of the same tools, except for this section over here. All you need to know is that the rig builder allows you to insert an NPC. So I can select the rig type, so R15, and I can select the kind of character it is. So I'm just gonna select block avatar. So it basically gives me a random dummy to test on. The animation editor allows you to animate rigs that you can then place on your character. If you're interested in animation, you should check out my animation tutorial, which I will leave an info card about here and a link in the description. Now let's move on to the test tab. So the test tab basically has a lot of the same things that we've seen before. So you have this play button over here, but if you click this drop down menu, you can see that there are some more options. So play here basically spawns your character at the location that your camera is looking at. So it'll spawn me about here instead of back there in the spawn location. Clicking run is a little different because it won't place your character inside the game. It will just run the game without any players inside. So any scripts that you have will run, but your character won't be inside. This section over here allows you to start your own server, except with multiple people. 
So you can select the amount of people you have inside and it's basically a bunch of copies of yourself. So if I start a local server with two people, I'll have two players that are inside, but I can control both of them from different windows. The device section under the emulation allows you to see the game through the eyes of different devices. So when I click that, I can switch between different devices. So I can look at what an iPhone 6 would see inside my game. So this is super useful for testing the size of your GUI. So unselect it, we're just gonna click device again. Next up is the view tab. So we already looked at this tab before, that's where we found the explorer and the properties tab, but you can also find a bunch of other useful stuff inside. For example, you can find the output bar here. Now this output window allows you to see any errors that your script might have. And it's also connected to this command bar and it can run any script that you want to test your game environment. You also have the view selector over here, which will basically tell you what direction that you're facing. So I can face the back, the top, and the right side, front side, left side, and back side. So it allows you to figure out which direction you're facing in your game environment. So the last tab we want to cover is the plugins tab. Now plugins are basically like extensions that other people have made. So they're super useful and they save you a bunch of time. For example, I have this avatar importer plugin. And what it allows me to do is insert any character I want inside my game. So I'm just gonna insert Tanker's character. So I can just search up his name and I can import an R6 or an R15 rig. So I'm just gonna insert an R6 rig. Basically I have Tanker's character inside my game now. So plugins are really useful and they save you a bunch of time. And you can find plugins under the toolbox. So you can go back to home, toolbox, and you can filter the toolbox by the different categories like models, plugins, audios, images, meshes, and more. So that's everything you need to know about the basics of Roblox Studio. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in learning scripting, Check out my beginner scripting guide and I'll leave an end screen right about now. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.